The second reading today is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. So immediately following Pentecost and the church calendar, we come to Trinity Sunday. Um, And there is good reason for that as we um, have followed Christ's birth and resurrection all the way through with all of his teaching and his own baptism um, in the middle. And the Holy Spirit has come. And so this is the Sunday we ground ourselves in what it means um, to be people, to be disciples of the triune God, one in three and three in one, um, who's now brain is shut down um, and ready to go home because we know that's mathematically impossible. As Michaela has pointed out, it's just bad grammar to say three persons. Um, And so we might as well. And as Alexa will point out, there's no direct passage in scripture that teaches us this doctrine of God as Trinity. Um, So we have the passage from creation this morning of being made in the image of God, of the great commission of being sent out in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we have the baptism of baptizing um, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit as we remember at Jesus' baptism the voice of God opening from the heavens, Jesus present in the water and the Spirit of God descending like a dove. So clearly there's something going on, um, but it's really confusing, not entirely, if any, um, logic-based. And so here we are celebrating a very confounding mystery. I'm not going to try to proof text the um, scripture today to make it fit of this is why we have the Trinity. Um, But what I am going to do is share why the Trinity is critical um, to my personal faith and I think is reflected and has become a doctrine that is at the core um, of our faith. And so we begin at the beginning right? It's a good place to start. I feel like there's a song there. Um, And and we celebrate the beginning of Olivia um, today and her name being written into the name of Christ and becoming a member of our family. Um, I'm going to let you in on a little secret, though, um, that needs to not be such a secret. Um, But here, this very first chapter of Genesis, the beginning of the whole story, was actually written with the hindsight of many, many chapters into the story. This one passage from creation wasn't written until not only we had Father Abraham, until not only Moses had rescued the Israelites from Pharaoh, not um, during the time of David and building a unified family and nation. It was even after that, after the fall of the kingdom, after the Babylonians had invaded and the people were in exile. This is when this scripture passage was written. Because in a dark place and in a dark time, needing some kind of hope, needing to remember who they are and whose they are, they remembered a different story, a story of God as creator, a story that reminded them that there was an order in the midst of everything feeling broken apart and in chaos, to remember that there was a time when God's breath moved over the waters of chaos in darkness and brought forth light and order, 
to remember a time that even though they couldn't see it right then in exile, they could see the sun rising and the sun setting, and that that in of itself was enough to remember their God, Yahweh, the creator, the Alpha and the Omega. Here's the thing with scripture and with our faith and life journeys. It's a living word. And that is true for the communities at the time of scripture as much as it is true for our communities here today. What we go through and what happens to us in life will give us a new way to understand a mystery that is beyond us and our understanding. So that each new experience, each new relationship opens a window to the divine that we didn't have before and gives a foundation for continuing to grow, for courage and for hope when, when there's enough happening that could cause us to crumble and to stop. This is the journey of faith. This is the journey of discipleship, and this is the journey we celebrate and all that God does to continually unfold in our midst so that we can know more and more and more of God. And the way that that happens is to show up. There are lots of other places that we all could have been this morning, but we came here. And so even if we came here and it was a barely getting here, we're still here. Or even if we came here and this was just one of those great mornings, and if you've had those, let me know how you have them, where you wake out of bed and you're ready to go and life is great and you can't wait and there's a full spectrum of who you are here. We celebrate those times and being here as well. Um, but it's kind of crazy that any of us are here. Um, it's been 2,000 years, and we say hindsight is 2020. but if we could take off that perspective and that remembering um, when we step onto the mountain that the disciples were on today, when they heard this great commission, those were 11 people who showed up, a congregation of 11, down from 12 from the week before, on an unnamed mountain and backwater Galilee, not a place of power in the Roman province at the time. And there they listen to Christ say, all authority on heaven and on earth is given to me. 11 people, unnamed mountain, backwater province, all authority. And, and it wasn't that they were all having one of those great mornings where they are awake and they are ready for the journey. They gathered and even scripture records for us, some at least in doubt wondering what this was all about, wondering who they were, wondering what was happening, not being sure about the truth that they were signing onto or finding. But they showed up, and that was enough because we do know the rest of the story, and we know the growth that happened, and we know the courage and the hope that was found, and we know the peace and the justice that has come into the world through this congregation of 11. So we celebrate all that God has done in us, through us, with us, and in spite of us. And those 11 who showed up didn't know all that they would be getting into or all that would happen and spill out from their actions and showing up. And Part of me is honestly thankful for of that because who's ever been in Washington, D.C.? I promise this connects with the huge escalators in the metro system. And you look up at them and you're like, oh, my gosh. And you hear the voice of your mom or a trainer in your head being like, time to walk, not ride. Like, you got to take this opportunity to stay in shape. And you're like, absolutely no way I'm making it up that thing. But all of a sudden, one foot in front of the other, and then a little while through with eyes burning, um, but you still one step in front of the other, even if it's a little slower than you started out, you're there. You're at top. That is what this journey of faith is, one step in front of the other, and it looks daunting and impossible, and it is. 
Because the only way we can do this is through all the authority in heaven and earth that comes to us in Jesus Christ. And resting in that power and working and stepping from that power one faithful step after the other. And that, my friends, is where doctrine comes from. It comes from the army of God, that engineer core bit of our body, knowing how to build the bridges that are needed in the field. Knowing that when we have a place that we need to cross, that we're up against, drawing on all the resources of all of the teaching and all of the training that we have had to be able to figure out how to put, assemble something together to get us to the next side, to be able to take that next step, to be able to bear the weight of a people marching with a mission. And so we come to a people trapped in exile, not knowing who they are in a time where their world has been turned upside down, but still being committed to following God and being the people that God has called them to be. And so find in this creation story a way to anchor themselves and a way to cross over through exile into the next chapter of their lives. And for this story of the Great Commission, we come to a congregation of 11 who found the courage that they needed to be able to take this message of salvation from their time, from their place, forward into all times and places to all the nations, beyond their own group and understanding. And we come today then a little bit on towards the early church, trying to figure out, right, a reason why that we were doing what we are doing. Why are we a people who have given all of who we are to this journey when we are coming up against persecution and harm and suffering when at best we are considered foolish for what we believe in, when at worst our blood is being spilled for it. And that, my friends, is when the doctrine of the Trinity began to be woven together. To understand that there is a living God who is at work and bringing peace and justice. And that it is something that God has given to us at the very start of this journey. God has infused and poured out God's Spirit, all of God's Spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, into us. Even though we can't understand it, even though we don't know completely why we need it, God has given all of who God is to us. So that as we take a next faithful step and a next faithful step, that will begin to unfold and to deepen. And we will know that we have a God who is beyond us. But if there were no Father, if there were no Son, or if there were no Holy Spirit with that Father, we would have all the power, but it would be completely detached and without relationship. And so we have Father and Son. But... If we had no Holy Spirit, then who would it be that continues to infuse us with the power to go and beyond ourselves and to carry this truth from one particular place at one particular time to all places and all peoples in all times? And if we didn't have the Son, where would be the relationship of having a brother, of seeing the face of God, of knowing that there is one who has taken on our sins and in his dying and rising have given us hope and a chance at more. We need the whole picture. We are made in the image of God and that God is one of relationship. And so today, I just want to celebrate some of the triune God sightings that we have had in this past week here at Epworth. If it weren't for all of you this week, we wouldn't have been able to get to this place. It's been a big week. We have two open positions here at our church in terms of our administrative assistant coordinator, right? Because you can have all the big ideas in the world, but if you don't have someone to connect the nuts and bolts, they're not ever going to happen. 
And so we have people who have given and their pledges and their offerings to make this position in our community possible. And we have people who have given, like Kim and Beth and Susan and Bill, of their time to come together to interview. And Amanda, who made it even possible for those interviews to happen because she organized everybody's schedule. Um, these are the moments that are woven together to happen. We have Vacation Bible School coming up, one of the most beautiful times that we have to bring our kids into a time that is focused only for them because they're sitting through a really long service right now that has great parts of it, but this whole thing isn't designed just for them and their faith growth. And so Vacation Bible School is, but it takes so many people doing it. Um, and we have those people who are stepping up, and Bernetta is going to be teaching um, and joining us. And we have Debbie, who's worked on some of the organizing, even though she really in her life needs to not be doing this. So if we have any good organizers out there that can do, give Debbie a hand, um, that is what we need. We need the ability to come together. When I go to do a funeral at Jessup's church and there's nobody there to bury the urn and there's and I don't know how it's going to happen or come together and I call Dottie in a panic because she's the only one I can get a hold of and I say, Dottie, we're here to do a service but we're in a, in a few minutes going to go out and going to um, try to say goodbye but there's not going to, I can't just leave an urn there and then be like, okay, peace out. Your Cecilia's great here, um, and then we just hope that somebody's going to come and take care of Cecilia. But Dottie had it all organized and did her calls around and was able to loop back, and we were there. These are the moments that we are all coming together to empower the ministry that happens in us, through us, with us, and in spite of us. Deb modeled that ministry this week because this is not an easy journey and conflict is gonna happen and it's way easier to just leave and go somewhere else and not come back. But in the midst of a conflict that Deb had at our group meeting, she left, but then after Bible study, we made a pact that she would go back on Monday. And you know what she did? She went back on Friday <laughs> because that's the power of God in our midst to infuse us with the strength that we don't have to be able to do the work that is needed. And that's what we are here to teach and to train each other in. Um, and that was the call of our youth at annual conference. Can you play the video, Barry? See us. You'll see us laughing, playing, singing, and talking. You'll see us hurting, fighting, lying, and crying. You'll see us in homes, schools, and malls. You'll see us in parks, on the street, and in churches. See us as potential disciples for you to reach. The call of the world continues to weaken the influence of our families and the church over us. It is becoming harder and harder for us to hear the message of God's love. The time is right for a decade-long emphasis on the youth of our world. We don't need another program. We don't need more events. What we need is for our church to be an intergenerational faith community. Where we are loved and valued. We need a church to minister to us and incorporate us into the church family. Through a wide variety of means and methods. We want and need opportunities to minister to others. In ways consistent with our agents. With our developmental abilities. And with our spiritual gifts. We, we are, are disciples in training, not disciples in waiting. Notice our potential. Help us unlock our potential. Help us live into our potential. We are the church of today and the church of the future. Include us. Our hope is that all our churches will annually assess the critical issues we face. In our communities and around the world. That churches will explore the resources available to help minister to us. That every church will help and resource our families. As a God-ordained structure for nurturing us. 
that every church will help us identify with Christ and enter into a personal relationship with him. That all ministries within the church will partner to incorporate youth into the faith community and most importantly, disciple us. We are seeking a denomination-wide emphasis on the importance of ministry to us. The youth of the entire world. Will you do whatever it takes to? See us. Hear us. Include us. Love us. Will you choose to meet us where we are? Will you teach us how to live? We are within your grasp. You can help change our lives. Please take time to share Christ with us. Because. In 10 years, I will be 23. In 10 years, I'll be 25. In 10 years, I will be 26. I'm 15, and in 10 years, I'll be 25. In 10 years, I'll be 23. I am 12. In 10 years, I'll be 22. I'm 14, and in 10 years, I'll be 24. I am 15, and in 10 years, I'll be 25. The question is, 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 in 10 years, will you have made a difference in our lives? May we be God's partner people. May we be the people who have said yes to make a difference in the lives of our youth, in the lives of Olivia, in the lives of our city. Our discipleship commitment this week is to partner with a youth um, to take on one um, policy change that we can advocate for together to bring peace and justice for a particular group of people or for our environment. So Lila was here um, a few months ago talking to us about her call to address um, trafficking um, and the issue that is affecting our global communities. So that is one example, Lila, go ahead and wave and show them so if the adults need to get in touch with you, they know who to go to. Whether that's recycling, Whatever it is, what is one way that we can partner together to make the difference and bring about the change that will bring peace with justice and a further glimpse into what it is to be a part of the divine dance of wholeness and be one and three and three and one. Would you stand and join in our closing hymn, Go Ye, Go Ye Into the World. <laughs> 